lot of people would like to make up the truth and attempt to do so. They don't receive the truth as something given. Our faith, which is the truth, the teaching of Jesus Christ, it is something which is given to us as a sacred deposit, a pearl of great price, a gift. Our business is to accept it in faith, to cherish it, to nurture it, to live in it. But if you don't like that truth, if you don't like some tenet of the faith, if you don't like part of the moral teaching of the church, you might buy into the serpent's lie. You might take the bait. You might decide you want to be God. What does God do? God brings something into being out of nothing. And so we begin to create our own reality. We begin to make up the truth. Oh, this or that isn't wrong. After all, we are people of the 90s. Uh, birth control, abortion, on and on. Well, that's not really a problem. We understand things better. We're enlightened. We're better educated. We make up our own truth. Rather than receiving what has been revealed, we seek to play God. We decide when life begins and when life ends. It's fatal. And so we have a culture which has rightly been called the culture of death. Why? Because we live out that original sin. We go with it. Pride, disobedience, death. From that moment in the Garden of Eden, the gates of heaven were closed. No one went to heaven, nor could they, from that moment on. We, in a sense, lived in a dismal place. Death was something to be feared. You didn't go to heaven after you died. Sheol, the abode of the dead. And it wasn't known to be a happy place. We were slaves, enslaved to sin, not having the power to truly live the way that we knew in our heart we should live, we limped through time and space. We were in need of a deliverer. We were in need of a savior, a redeemer. The Jewish people waited for the Messiah, the anointed of God. They waited, and they waited. The answer to the why of all that suffering, the answer to the anguish of every human heart, then, now, always, is not something, but somebody. The answer to every pain question is Jesus Christ, and there just isn't any answer. So stop wasting your time if you are, and I want you to take a good look at a crucifix. I want you to take a long, hard, discerning look at a crucifix on this Good Friday. And I want that glance at reality to transform you, to change you from this moment on, no matter how good you are. And so many of you are such good people. Or how bad you are, though your sins be as scarlet. On this day, they are washed clean by the blood of the Lamb if we say yes to redemption. We need to trust in God. We need to trust in the power of his redemptive sacrifice. We need to have hope. We need to have faith. We need to love. Maybe you're suffering right now. Good Friday is your day. Maybe. You might agree with me, sometimes I think Good Friday is my feast day. You might think it might be your feast day too, it is. It definitely is. It's the day that Jesus laid down his life willingly, only to take it up again on the third day. Why? For you and for me. It is not some mere generic offering. I want you to know that it is for you personally if the Lord Jesus had the chance to suffer 
and die for you and you alone, he would do it. In fact, he did do it. If you were the only one that God would ever create, he did it for you. You must believe that. Redemption's personal. Jesus, indeed, is a personal Savior. Do you believe it? You better believe it. You have to believe it, because if you don't believe that, you're empty, and you're suffering very much. So today is the day, no matter what place you are in. You may be in a very dark place today. Some of you watching this may be enslaved to alcohol, to drugs, sex, pornography, whatever it is. You may be in a dark, dismal place. I tell you on this day, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings suffered for you personally. Accept that gift of redemption.